Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be joined by Jonathan Hung, co-managing partner of Unicorn Venture Partners. He's worked with companies like Amazon, Burlington, and Costco, made investments in startups like Miso Robotics, and has worked at Morgan Stanley, UBS, and Cummins. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Seth, for having me. You've had an incredible career journey. How did you get started? Um, Really, it was just, uh, I think like it's, how I went through my educational course, you know, like I tell people it's weird. Like I tell people I go collect brains. I don't think I'm the smartest. I just know I need to go. I'm smart enough to find really good talent and work with really good people. No one does it by himself. So how I got started was, hey, I went to USC for undergrad, uh, did a business degree there. Right away, went to London School of Economics after graduate aging in 2005 to get my master's in international relations uh, from London School of Economics, came back, worked in finance you know i was there when it was the great recession really in the beginning and i just remember how the stock market dropped and just like i learned so much i mean the joke is like hey if you're under the age of 34 you don't know what it's like to invest in a bear market and i think we're in the bear market uh territory now you know we, we're going to see a recession come and now we're going to find out who's really good and from there you know, I was able to learn a lot about finance. Then I also learned like it wasn't just everything I wanted to do. I wanted to understand the operation side of a business. I went to MIT, went to get my master's in engineering supply chain, was able to do that and go work for China and work for Cummins in, in Shanghai, China. And there, uh, for better or worse, I had to come back home and take over for my family's business because my father got sick. He had end stage renal failure and I took over the clothing company. You know, we did tremendous amount of business uh manufacturing in throughout china from shanghai to dandong to you know oh gosh like nantong making clothes for amazon costco and Burnico factory it it was the longest shop i've ever had right now instead of doing clothing that business is more of a family office now in terms of investing and that was my second really passion was investing and that's why i went to warden to get my mba because i knew i was going to do a little bit of a career change and so that's where I had come. And, you know, for the last, since 2012, been an angel investor, been a venture capitalist and excited to keep going. That Okay, so that is absolutely incredible. I'm not sure how you had time to have so many careers with yeah. all of the time you spent at elite top level, you know, educational institutions. How did um, Unicorn Venture Partners come about? Uh, it came about because I went to Warden, uh, funny enough, and also because one of my best friends I've known since he was, uh, geez, 21, I was 24, Philip Serafin. You know, in 2018, after graduating, I, I knew that like, hey, I have my contract manufacturing business, that's going to slow down. And right now, let me start something new with a couple of really close friends. We started Unicorn 2018. We didn't take out any really outside money. It was really three partners. And we put it together about five and a half million dollar fund and to see and build a track record together uh, i'm happy to say that you know we did a pretty good job so far you know hey we're going to that you know recession like i said we'll see but right now we're up almost like five times our money and you know looking to grow from there unicorn you know was a smaller fund from series a pre-seed to series a philip started his own truesdale ventures with his which is his basically evergreen family office fund and that's a much bigger fund you know in the last 18 to 24 months probably 400 million dollars has gone out the door in investing and it's made me see really deals from pre-seed all the way to pre-ipo 
writing anywhere where we looked at check sizes from 50,000 to up to 20 million, or before we were mostly like, you know, maybe 25 to half a million. That is an absolutely incredible journey. I am sure the longer version should be in a book somewhere if it isn't already. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. I I think about that and like you already have the I already have the title of my book picked out. You know, so I always like to tell people this so people can't choose it in case of emergency. Because I think that like not only just in, in life, like you want to have your be that person's emergency contact really for your businesses, you know, and your partners. It's like, hey, it's not just good news. It's also bad news that you have to deal with. And when times are tough, I hope I'm that first phone call. Absolutely incredible. So what makes a good investment for you? What are you looking for? What gets your attention? For me, I mean, it depends like where my hat is, you know, uh, at the same time, like, look, I'm a founder right now. I'm doing the journey of trying to raise money, trying to get revenue, going from zero to one, you know, it's different where when I was working, you know, for my family business, my dad set everything up. You know, I just had to make sure the levers and the buttons were pushed correctly and we could land that plane softly. You know, right now I'm trying to build a plane and see if it could fly. And for me, what's really interesting is that it's different things when you look at it from an investor side versus a founder side. From an investor side, I always look for the team because I'm really early. I don't, the idea of growing from like 3 million to 9 million, I don't think it's necessarily easy, but I think it's easier than going from zero revenue to 100K because you see how much it takes. You know, I, I have this weird stat in my mind where it's like, you know, you don't even know what you have until you raise and spent at least a million bucks. To grow a business like i mean i think it's a small percentage it could be even less than three percent but i've heard sometimes like for a company to get to like 10 million revenue is very like it's it could be like less than three percent chance and like when you think about the people and the companies who exit like you got to get to that certain velocity whether you're a consumer goods or whether you're a b2b SaaS company and even now when you see crypto and nfts and all that that's a whole new world we're learning to see what is you know the right exit opportunity for an investor and then from the founder's perspective it's really like wow it's just you're gonna get so many no's before you get a yes and how you take that every day and how you keep building and growing upon each other and having the right team is so important and critical. Yeah, absolutely. Are there uh, particular industries that you like investing in better? You know, for me, I have, I don't want to say necessarily a knack, but I just have been more exposed to CPG. You know, I love other businesses, you know, that we've invested in. Like, look, I was able to get into Coinbase. You know, I was get, able to get into uh, robotics. Like one of some of my best investments are in robotics, whether it's Miso Robotics or Blair Flag Robotics. And I'm not a, you know, PhD robotics from Caltech, but I invested in PhD robotics from Caltech. I was able to get my MIT and I found like, wow, it was just a great business idea. But then when I look at CPG, it's a, it's a steady path. Like, when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's not like becoming a lawyer or a doctor where you know where you have to go step by step, the programs you're supposed to do. And like, hey, one day you graduate, one day you become a professional. Really, from my perspective, CPT is like, okay, you have a product, you have to go sell it, whether it's direct to consumer, or whether you go find you know a traditional retailer, you know the steps you need to get in certain in revenue. You don't know how you're going to get there. It's not the A to B or A to Z. It's like you go up, down, turn around. You know, I'm going through that now with some of my portfolio companies where, hey, they might have raised $10 million, but they haven't been able to achieve even $5 million in sales. So what are we doing right or wrong? You have to figure that out and fix it. Absolutely. So you've been and are on both sides of the table. You've been the founder trying to raise money and you've been the venture capitalist trying to invest. What lessons did you learn from playing both sides of the table? Uh, you know, as, as an investor, it really is about finding the right team and the individuals you want to put in money. Like, like I said, I don't do growth stage, you know, investing for venture capital or private equity. I'm really early. Like I'm betting on the person and the team initially, and it could be less than a couple of people, just two co-founders figuring it out. And, you know, it sounds like a great idea, you know, and then how can I help them get there? How can I achieve them? I tell people like, I'm your high school counselor. I'm just trying to get you to college. I can't guarantee you're going to go to college and pass and like, you know, get a good job after, but I'm trying to get you to that point where you can raise your series A money and you have product market fit. Like, you know, just like a college counselor, 
you have an idea that you want to be a doctor or you want to be, you know, a financial, you know, business person, or you want to be a writer, et cetera. Like that's what I try to get to. And I look at the person and see what he or she makes sense. You know, and you tell them like, listen, it doesn't make sense. Like this is the pattern recognition that I've gone through over the last 10 years of doing this that I could teach you and let you know. And then from the founder perspective, I can say like, I don't want to call bullshit, but I can call bullshit on people. Cause like you see that it's like, no, well, like I'm not achieving that, you know? So how can someone else be achieving that? And then also I can learn from others. Like, well, okay, that's one way of doing it, but then maybe we should go over somewhere else where like other people aren't looking at, you know, it's like the innovator's dilemma that Clayton Christensen wrote about. We're like, oh, we should focus on that. Cause like, if I was to start another social media company, I mean, the goalpost is like, you know, a hundred yards farther away. Let me find something, a shorter kick. And I could like score. That makes a lot of sense with all that you've, I mean, how do you juggle growing your own company and investing and in helping your portfolio, your fund companies grow as well? Well, you know, the one thing, you know, where I'm a little lucky is, is that I have a great support system. You know, um, unfortunately, my father did pass away almost seven years ago, but he gave me a great opportunity to, you know, trust the people I had. He built a great team. You know, my mother's been very helpful. You know, I, I give credit to people who can work and go to school and have kids. You know, I, I still have, have kids yet. So it gives me more time, you know, to focus on these things. But, you know, right now I'm engaged and I'm excited to start, you know, the next chapter of my life. I'm turning 40 years old at the end of the year, December 29th. And to me, it's like, it's halftime. You know, hopefully it's like, you know, not like get to 80 and that's it, but like you go as long as you can. But I see my life, you know, divided into quarters, you know, zero to 20, you're just a kid trying to figure things out. 21 to 40, you're trying to find what you're good at, you know, and then when you go from 41 to 60, the third quarter, like you can, you know what you're doing, you know what makes you excited. You're not just doing anything for free. You know, you're not doing internships anymore. It's not just doing it for the experience and like, oh, this is my career. And then the best part is like, once you go through that phase, 60 and higher, the fourth quarter, that's probably when you're gonna make the most money because like you have all the experience. Unfortunately, for, or fortunately for us, unlike athletes, like, you know, when you hit 40, it's over unless you're Tom Brady, but, at the, but really when you hit 40, you're just beginning. And then you're gonna know exactly what to do. Someone like a Warren Buffett, you know, hey, now you know exactly better and make even more money and be even more successful and helpful to people. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? That every day is different, you know, and sometimes you are putting out fires, but sometimes, you know, it's just great seeing, hey, the progress of really great companies, like whether they're exiting or just achieving, you just find that success. Like people think it's easy, think it's like an overnight success. It's not, you know, and you see the excitement of somebody and that's what, makes me happy. It's not just like, oh, I, I got a certain dollar amount at the end of the day, but I was able to help somebody. And those are the relationships you build. And then you help build the next generation, you know, or the next founder and help them grow to that next level. Like I said, like, it's almost like being a high school counselor, right? I mean, okay, just because you help this class graduate and move forward, hey, you got a new batch of people, you know, who are ready and willing to live and you know, learn with you. Um, I love doing necessary i want to call it community service but giving back you know I, I went to mit so i helped with delta v there whether it's a uh, wharton and people hit me up on linkedin or you know send me random emails like hey let's see what i can do and help you know i only know what i'm good at and if i don't i'll be all open and honest that's awesome for our folks watching or listening who want to learn more about you and unicorn where is the best place for them to go Best place would be go to my website, jonathanhung.com. I was very lucky to get off, get it one day and I, I got a GoDaddy message. I'm like, let's do it. You know, and also LinkedIn, you know, Jonathan Hung. Hey, hey shoot me a message. You know, uh, I, I try to read everything. And if not, I have a great marketing team that pushes great, you know, they kind of screen things for me. And I'm building my next chapter and, and thing right now. I'm potentially working with a new fund with some great new partners now that have a little bit more focus on what I've learned over the last, you know, 10 years of my career. And I think it's going to be different than what I did for the first, you know, 10. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, we know your time is incredibly valuable. We great, gratefully appreciate you spending some of it with us. This has been Seth Green with Jonathan Hong. Jonathan, thanks again for joining us. Thank you for having me, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We will talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? 
Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.